We probably all have heard about the encrapification of the internet. Yeah, I'm not saying the exact word because, well, YouTube and profanity or just swearing in the first 30 seconds of a video. This is the practice of making a service or a product worse and worse over time. After you're cornered a market or as you realize that you can squeeze more money out of something. It's happening to video streaming services like Amazon Prime adding ads to its first paid tier. It's happening to online services in general, with Uber Eats jacking up the price of every food item that you could get for a third cheaper from any store. Or it's happening to operating systems, for example with Windows, placing ads everywhere in an operating system you paid for when you bought your computer. Because yes, the price of Windows was included in the price you paid for your PC. So I thought it could be fun to look at what a Linux distro would look like with the same principles applied. Not just making it paid, because that's perfectly fine, but doing a lot of terrible things to try and earn more and more cash with dark patterns. And those are just a few ideas sourced from myself and some Patreon and YouTube members. But if you have more of those, leave them in the comments so hopefully a company can get inspired by them and start doing them for real. Okay, so let's imagine a Linux distro made by a big tech company. At first, they're giving it all for free. Free download, all the features you would expect, but with an awesome integration with their own suite of online services. Desktop clients that only exist on their own distro. It looks good, they're gaining users, lots of users. They're using a modified version of KDE because that's more modular and it's easier for them to tweak things and add features. They have their own super duper packaging format that is super flexible and better than anything else to the point many other distros are now using it as well and virtually everyone distributes their software through that. And they also have direct relationships with hardware manufacturers to make sure they can ship the best experience. The experience is so good, in fact, that a lot of the Linux community just moved to that big tech Linux distro. They are the savior of the Linux desktop. They will bring the year of the Linux desktop upon us. And sure, there are some really weird neck beards talking about embrace, extend, extinguish, but they're all just weird blokes living in their mom's basement. And then this big tech company realizes they have 42.0% of the Linux desktop market. So maybe it's time to get some money out of this thing. At first, it's nothing too weird. We're just going to make you log in with an account. Because you know, the main reason you picked our distro is to use our services. So it's actually helpful, right? Instead of remembering two passwords, now there's only one. You log into the computer with the account, you create your user account with it, it's simple enough. Don't worry, you can still log in while your computer is offline. We are not monsters. Although you will have to connect to the internet at least once a month if you don't want to be permanently logged out because that's for security reasons. Now, of course, since you're using your account, you will be giving us just a tiny bit of telemetry when you log in, from where, and a few details about the computer. It's all for security so you can know if someone is trying to access your system from somewhere else. But now, you know what? It would be better if we could get just a teeny tiny bit more data about you. Just basic things like what you're opening and when, the commands you're typing, how often do you use certain features, the things you type in the OS search, your folder structure, just a few things to help us better understand how you use your Linux system and to improve things. It's all for your convenience. And of course, all of this data is going to be attached to your account. But don't worry, we're not selling access to this data yet. Now that's the next step. Now that people have given us a bunch of data and have accepted its collection, let's introduce some partnerships. Again, it's to make your experience better. From the data we collected, we know people tend to install these great applications or this game. So why not just place a handy shortcut in your menu right after you install? You've already installed the distro? No worries, we will add that icon in your task manager so you don't forget. No, it is not an ad. It is a recommendation that we've just incidentally been paid to add there. Don't you like discovering new software? Of course you do. 
and also we're going to tailor these recommendations to you using your data because who wants to see recommendations that they never asked for? That's why we placed, for your convenience, these recommendations in the taskbar on your desktop and in your start menu. Way easier to access. Sure, people will start to grumble because, well, yes, you never requested these things, but don't worry, you can disable these in the settings, down at the very bottom, somewhere you will only find if you find an online article or tutorial to tell you how to get rid of them. And now it's time to trick. We know we placed a few unpopular things inside of your operating system. So we know it's only just that we give you a new feature in exchange. So say hi to your new AI assistant. It's called Tux because why not? And it's adorable. It pops up when you press the super key instead of the main menu. And it lets you run programs, do online searches, install apps, run commands, generate images and text and code, and it's just the best thing ever. And it's deeply integrated into the system because we collected a lot of data now and we know what you like. So we trained it on that data. And it will also be used to collect data, but that's just for ongoing training and also for a few more personalized recommendations here and there. You want this assistant to get better, right? So you need to give it more data. Okay, now that you're happy about these features, the OS is pretty much complete, but we have noticed not everyone uses the same features. So today we're happy to introduce a brand new system that lets everyone get a tailored experience and only the features that they want. It's an innovative thing where you can still use the base system for free but more advanced features that we noticed not everyone uses, these will now require a paid subscription. The free tier gives you the entire OS, complete with our great AI assistant, recommendations and helpful telemetry. But a lot of our users don't use the command line and don't install any package other than applications. We also noticed not everyone uses every available port on their device all the time. So free users will now no longer have access to the terminal or the package manager. They will use Tux, our adorable AI assistant, to install anything. As long as it's a graphical app, no libraries or individual packages allowed. Also, you will be limited to USB 3 speeds instead of USB 4, because that's for power users who need to use more battery life. But don't worry, all of these great features are still available in our premium tier. With it, you get access to the entire command line and also to all the packages in the repos that you can install from the command line or our graphical tool. You also don't get our recommendations because you are an advanced user and you know what you like. You also get access to more personalization options than free users, changing accent colors, the wallpaper, the sound theme. You can even change certain advanced settings, like the services running in the background or using the legacy X server for your specific needs. And of course, with every new update, you'll have to read and agree to our terms and conditions because these will change every month. Of course, don't read it to the end because there's nothing important in here. Of course, now, some people might not be happy. They want some features of our ultimate plan, but they also don't need all the features in there. Or maybe they just don't like paying for something that should be entirely free like it was before. Nah, that's not it. They just want more tiers and more customization options. That's certain. Because we noticed premium users were not really advanced users. So maybe they do need to have some recommendations after all. Free users also need more of those, so we elongated the title bars of the windows. It's, it's more accessible, it's easier to click them and to move them around, but also they look pretty empty, so we added scrolling banners in them to recommend you to upgrade or to get more interesting features and apps. We're also removing the option to change the default apps for free users and making it available for premium and upwards, because free users really did not change their web browser anyway. 
Yeah, and if the EU starts knocking on our door, just we'll have a ballot screen that only appears if you find a very specific hidden option. They are fine with that for at least two years and then we'll get a fine, but it's okay, we'll have made billions by then. Also, free users will now have to wait uh, for the end of each month for updates and security updates. Premium users get these weekly and Ultimate users get these daily. They need the updates more. It's not like you have a choice anyway, because our awesome packaging format has been adopted by virtually everyone under the sun and every commercial developer, because we do have all the market share that the Linux desktop has by now. Sure, some neckbeards are trying to maintain older, crappier distros with older packaging formats, but there's no hope for them. Okay, I'll stop here, you get the point. And also, there are basically zero chances of that ever happening to a Linux distro. Although Chrome OS maybe could if it ever became successful, but since the base Linux desktop has more market share than Chrome OS these days, I don't see that as a likely outcome. It might also sound like I just described Windows, which, well, kinda, because that's exactly what Windows and on a smaller level Mac OS are doing right now. Chances are in the near future Microsoft is going to move Windows to a subscription service, opening the door to all of this. Maybe not for Windows 12, but at least for 13 or 14, whatever number they want to pick after 12. This is definitely going to be a subscription service. There is no reason why they would not do it. Still, I thought it would be fun to look at what could happen if the enchitification of the entire web also started reaching Linux distribution. So do you think I went too far or not far enough? Let me know in the comments. And if you have other horrible ideas to ruin everyone's fun, well, let me know in the comments as well. It's always nice to hear about them. And usually there would be a sponsor here, but for this kind of video, it would not feel great. So no sponsor, I just leave you with the fact that there are plenty of links to support the channel in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!